This is world's most popular liquor. Do you guys know what this is? It's called soju. Soju is a Korean distilled liquor, and it's unquestionably popular in Korea. When we Koreans hang out, we don't really ask each other what to drink that night, because it's already assumed that we'll be drinking soju. Now, the exact sales numbers vary, but all of the statistics seem to agree that soju, in fact, is the best-selling liquor globally. They're so popular, they actually sell multiple folds more than brands like Bacardi or Johnny Walker. And today, I'm going to make soju using one magical ingredient, and that is rice. What? I can make this from this? Damn right you can. My goal in this video is to produce a traditionally distilled soju at home by using the tools and ingredients that are easily accessible to most of us. Now, I can't wait to drink my freshly squeezed Jimmy soju. But the first step to producing soju is actually producing another traditional liquor, makgeolli. Makgeolli is this milky rice wine that was consumed by a lot of working class people in Korea. And it's known as the oldest alcoholic beverage in Korean history. And don't get me wrong, it's very popular still. And guess what, it's pretty insanely easy to make it at home. So let's make this together. It's gonna make you feel like a really cool Korean peasant, like these guys. I'll show you every step to this, but I promise this won't be boring like your high school science class. So listen up now. The first thing that you have to do is to rinse 2 kilograms of rice. Rinse the rice in a bucket, but don't do it the way that your mom normally does. Do it gently so that the grains of rice don't get crushed. Apparently that can lead to bad makgeolli. Sometimes things aren't just about your power. It's about the grace of the technique. It'll take some patience, but after a while, the water will become clear like my soul. Notice how it's still kind of pale? I just couldn't get it to be completely clear. Just like how there's a little bit of darkness in my soul. Once you have the clean rice, you want to soak it in water for 2 hours and then drain it for an hour. Well, I forgot the draining part, but you shouldn't. And after that, we can finally cook the rice. Since there's too much rice to cook at once, I'm gonna divide the rice in half and use two different cooking methods today. If you want to use the traditional method, instead of boiling the rice, you have to steam this rice. Get a steamer basket, put a cloth on top, and just start sticking the rice on top of it. Level everything nicely, and I'm going to steam this for 50 minutes. For the remaining half of the rice, I'm gonna use a rice cooker. The goal here is to cook the rice using as little water as possible. Now you might be asking, how does that rice turn into alcohol? Well, that's all thanks to the little creatures that are in this nuruk. What? There's like animals in this bag? Like sea monkey? Actually, the answer to that is yes. This nuruk that you can often find in Korean supermarkets is a fermentation starter that contains enzymes and yeast. You know, microorganism type of business. Just like viruses, bacteria, or people with too much time to spend on Twitter. Although unlike those people, this noodle's good for something. And that is fermenting the rice. You have to use 10% of the rice weight, which in my case is 200 grams. Soak it in water for like an hour before use. And absolutely do not dump this water. That's where all your precious microorganisms are. And without them, your noodle becomes as useless as a father that left his kids. You don't really have to break it into tiny pieces like I'm doing here, but I'm just having fun doing it. Now, let's check on the rice, and that looks nice and dry. It's like one of the few things that I like to enjoy dry, you know? Like my humor. Now, as soon as you're done with the rice, you wanna lay them flat. You wanna cool them down to the room temperature as fast as possible. That's because you don't want them to absorb moisture. From this point and on, make sure that every tool that you're using is completely sanitized. I've boiled my cloth just before doing this. Trust me guys, I know what I'm doing. Well, it's my first time too. After you cool down the rice, put everything in one bowl. At this point, I was able to tell that steamed rice yielded much better dry rice than the rice cooker. Once you have all the rice in the bowl, add the pre-soaked nuruk. Wow, that looks disgusting. Like, a horse took a big dump on top of it. But Korean food isn't known for being pretty. The people are. And after that, you want to add boiled or bottled clean water that matches the amount of the rice that you had in the first place. In my case, it'll be 2 liters. Oh wow, look how wet you are now. Now take your time, use both hands to mix things up for half an hour. The goal is to mix the nuruk with the rice while separating clumped up pieces of rice. Even while doing this, be gentle and try not to crush the rice. Do it like you're handling a cute little hamster. You know, your hamster, not the hamster that your annoying friend has. Oh, cause you know what you'd be tempted to do with his hamster. 
ju- just, just kidding, guys. N- never thought of that. And when you're done, it's gonna look something like this. Now get a jar, plastic or glass, preferably glass, completely sanitized with alcohol or heat, and carefully fill it up with the mixture that we've created just now. And now seems like the perfect timing for your cute, funny, charming substitute science teacher, Mr. Jimmy, to explain how this turns into alcohol. Like I said earlier, Nuruk has two main components, enzymes and yeast. It begins by a process called glycolysis. In this magical process, the enzymes in this mixture will break down the starch, the carbohydrate in the rice, and then turn them into glucose, which is a type of simple sugar. That's where yeast comes in, and yeast loves feeding on their sugar. Why? I don't know, maybe they're from America. As byproducts of breaking down glucose, we'll end up with ethanol and carbon dioxide. And yes, the ethanol is the alcohol that gets us drunk and leads to more human babies being born. Knowing my father's unhealthy relationship with alcohol, I might have come from this too. Once you fill up your jar, press down on the top of the rice to flatten it, and use sanitizing alcohol on a kitchen towel to wipe the inner surface of the jar clean. You do not want any kind of contamination here. And now all I have to do is just to put the lid on. By the way, you absolutely do not want to seal it tight because as the rice gets fermented, it's going to start producing CO2 and your jar can potentially explode. When I looked at it, it looked like it's almost completely solid without any fluid, which honestly worried me a little, but it's actually a good sign. The reason that we want to dry rice in the first place is because we want to maximize the effect of osmosis. Just like how a dry towel can absorb more water than the towel that's already wet, the drier rice absorbs the nuruk fluid more easily to fully ferment the rice from the inside. And now I'm going to let it ferment for 7 days. For the best results, you want to keep this jar at around 25 degrees Celsius and out of the sunlight. So I decided to keep it next to my PC which should give it the warmth that it needs. You know, the kind of warmth that I never grew up with. And this is after about 12 hours. You can already see that the rice is breaking down, getting fermented now. And after about 24 hours, it builds up some liquid in the bottom which is really cool. At least for the first 3 days, you want to open the jar and turn everything upside down and mix up that liquid with the rice. Look how much fun I'm having with this. Once you're done, you want to close the jar. By the third day, the rice was half dissolved. Alright, let's do what I'm supposed to do. It's starting to smell like store-bought makgeolli. I can kind of feel the warmth coming out of the container too. Let me show you guys the inside. And as it's releasing CO2 like Coca-Cola, it was making this really cool sound. I'll let you guys hear it. And here's a really cool time lapse of how everything happened. You can see how overnight the rice was getting broken down and sinking to the bottom of the liquid. Isn't this cool guys? When we eat sugar, we just get fat. But these guys poop out alcohol for us to enjoy. And after 7 long days, the day of our harvest has come. This is the makgeolli. Isn't this cool? It's all like liquid now. Remember how it used to be like rock solid? It's all watery now. I invited my friend over and promised him an amazing dinner with makgeolli and soju. You guys still remember that my final goal is to make soju, right? Time for some serious business. It's been 7 days since I started fermenting this makgeolli. And let me open this. Wow, it smells so good. It smells pretty unbelievable. Always sanitized, always sanitized. Even my hands might want to do this. Now all I have to do is start filtering it out. Okay, it's gonna take a while. Well, if I do it this way, it's going to take forever. So I decided to get a little help from my friend. It's heavy. There you go. So all you have to do now is to squeeze the heck out of it. Wow, isn't this cool? This is so cool. This sounds exactly like when I piss. 
so far it looks and smells really good. It just took some time to get everything out of there. I think I ended up with almost 4 liters of makgeolli, and that's almost double the rice that I initially put in, which is kind of crazy. It's almost like most of that rice melted. Wow. Let's try this makgeolli as it is, just the way our ancestors did. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. It tastes just like makgeolli, like store-bought makgeolli, uh, except it's like higher in alcohol content. Talking about the alcohol content, can we, can we take a moment to like test it? So I have this little tool. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is like a little tool to measure how much alcohol content there is. You just need a few drops in there. Turn it upside down. And if you guys can see, wait, it's 20, no way. So it's 21% alcohol. I don't know if this is accurate, but if it is, that's very high. Now, I don't know how much I can trust that, but let's just take that number with a grain of salt. But if you put it in the it's not bad. No, it's not bad. Wait Why don't we like bottle a few? I'm having like so much fun, dude. This is insane. So I need some of the makgeolli to make soju with. But then I ended up with so much makgeolli that I decided to keep half of it. I felt like these are such fine quality liquor, so I decided to give it some branding as well. Guys, you know what's cool? Check this out. OMG. This is so cute and nice. Samchon makgeolli. There you go. So when I was done bottling half of what we made, it ended up filling up 8 bottles and I was really happy with it. Now don't tell me that's not cool. Because that's absolutely cool. As much as I would like to drink it now, I'm going to keep them in the fridge for a better day. Now, if you guys thought that was exciting, watch this. Now, this is where the real science begins. We're going to use this leftover makgeolli to create soju now. To do that, I'm going to have to pour this makgeolli into this pot. I hope I don't mess up. God, I hope that's a lot of soju. So the makgeolli goes into the pressure cooker and I'm going to take this silicone hose and connect it to the top of the pressure cooker. That's where the steam comes out from the pressure cooker and I'm going to zip tie it to make sure that it stays tight. You might have guessed by now but I'm going to boil the makgeolli and try to vaporize the alcohol. <laughs> when vaporized alcohol travels through the hose, it'll then arrive at this rudimentary cooling system that I made. And as the temperature drops, the alcohol will turn into liquid again, which then gets collected right here. So how does this isolate the alcohol from the rest? By turning the stove on, the makgeolli that's in the pot will start to boil. Except what I'm trying to do here is not trying to boil the water. I'm trying to boil the ethanol, the alcohol content that's in the makgeolli. So I achieved that by boiling it at around 78 degrees Celsius. As long as I keep it around the temperature, the water is going to stay here. And then at the end, we're going to start to collect the liquidated alcohol. And that's going to be our soju. This is actually how you make traditional soju. Isn't this cool? So I started boiling the makgeolli. And sure enough, the fumes of alcohol started coming out. So is this going to work? This is, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. It's working! I honestly felt like a little kid working on this. It was such a fun project to me. The first batch of distilled alcohol contains methanol, which is toxic and I'm going to throw it away. And now I can start collecting ethanol that's drinkable. And after a while, I collected about one cup of my highly pure soju. I collected a few drops of it and measured the ABV, alcohol by volume, and I was baffled by the number I was seeing. 72% alcohol? I kind of find it hard to believe. I think it might be inaccurate. Okay, I'll take a scoop of this. 72%. Is it really? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> what surprises me though, is that it's really high in alcohol, but it tastes really clean. I think I actually made good alcohol. Since 72% is too strong for soju, I decided to add some more water to it to make it taste more like the soju that you see in the stores. 
But something weird happened when I added more water to it. It started turning pale, and people were saying different reasons to why this might happen. So we decided to be safe and not drink this soju. I don't know if you're gonna die from drinking this. I just don't want to put myself and my friend into that risk. I'm gonna bottle it still. Long story short, I kind of fucked up the soju. I want to do it again, but not today. Under the very unfortunate circumstances, I bottled it. I'm going to keep it. In fact, I'm going to keep it in my fridge for a very long time. It's a reminder of my ignorance, my failure, but my willingness to continue. One day, I'll do this right, guys. But I made heck of a makgeolli, so we're going to drink that. But guess what? We're going to have to have some food with it too. For tonight, I'm going to make this traditional Korean pork belly dish called bosam. There are many different ways of cooking this, but I'll show you the easiest way. This is doenjang soybean paste. I got this for like, I don't know, $2 at the market. This is one kilogram of pork belly. So I, what I'm going to do is uh, scoop up some doenjang and smudge the shit out of it. <laughs> I think some pepper might make it a little better. Not too much. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is grab these mother excuse my language, children, put them in a bag. Into the fridge for about an hour because I got, I got things to do. We'll be back in an hour. And after an hour, you're gonna add one sliced onion to a pot. Gingers. Throw the pork in there, fat side up. As you can see, I only have an onion, garlic, and some ginger, and I put the pork belly on top. Put the lid on, I'm gonna put it on medium heat for about 15 minutes with no water. You'll notice very quickly that the moisture from the ingredients start to build up, and that steams the pork. And in 50 minutes, perfect tasting bosan for you just like that. All I'm gonna have to do now, take it out of there. And you just have to slice everything. Perfect. It's like so tender that the meat's like falling apart. Oh my God. Guys, can we just agree that it looks great? I'm going to serve it with some mumalengi, a Korean side dish made from radish. There is no more time to be wasted. We're gonna have to start consuming now. Excuse me, did anybody order some amazing Korean food? <laughs> Whoa! Sometimes it makes me wonder how I'm so good at this. It's like I've been a Korean housewife in my past life. Wait, there's a great cage on my plot. Ah, thank you. Whoa. Ah, 제가 제가. 한국이잖아 한국. 한국에서는 따라줘야 되거든. Guys, beautiful, beautiful. Guys, look at this, look at this. Wow. Bosam done In 100% honesty, this was better than Bosam I'd get from restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna make a total package here. Now, 여기다가, 여기, 여기, 여기다가. Oh. Okay. Wow. Mm. You'd have to be kind of crazy to not like this. What can I say guys? This dinner was any man's dream. Me and my friend thoroughly enjoyed the food and the makgeolli that I made from scratch. And that, my friends, is a special feeling. So guys, did I fail? Well, maybe I did. But I had such an amazing time, 
being able to cook dinner for me and my friend, ending off with a bunch of makbali that I can share with the people that I like, and trying my best to create something that was completely mysterious to me. If that's considered a failure, then I guess I failed. Thanks again everyone for watching my videos. Please watch my other videos right here. Till we meet again. Goodbye.